what is going on everyone is Bori and welcome back to another video now today I'm going to be doing a video on Hawaiian baby woodrow seeds I'm probably gonna read out I'd say three stories in today's video so be hyped for that uh, Callum Kirby left a comment on my morning glory seeds video and said to do more LSA so I was like damn you yeah, know, I'll, I'll do the Hawaiian baby woodrow seeds, why not, right? But before I get into these few stories here, quick shout out to the channel members. We have Carlos, Spicy Wiener, El Prof, Callum Kirby, Nick Conkey, Val Skates, Mike Sterlak, J Mac, Pepe Harambe, Nick Poker, The Archaic Bard, Marlon Chase, Shagward, and Ferds. Massive shout out to all of those boys um, for enabling me to keep posting content. It's, uh, it means a lot. Anyway, I'm going to jump right into the reports here, so leave a like and a comment if you guys do enjoy this video. Um, but the first story we have here is titled Twitching Buds of Lust, Pain, and Mat Matricide. It's on Hawaiian Baby Woodrose, apparently six seeds, so I don't know if this is going to be very strong. I mean, that sounds like a very, very small dose. Um... But yeah, I, I, I actually, I'm pretty sure this is actually pretty standard. I'm looking at the other reports now. They're both six and eight seeds. So I'm guessing you don't need a lot for this. Rather than um, Morning Glory, those guys are taking like 80 seeds. Or way more than that. I think hundreds. Anyway, the body weight is 160 pounds. And it goes something like this. Wednesday night, I decided to test some Hawaiian baby wood roast seeds. It had been roughly eight months since my last attempts with LSA most of which were unsuccessful, and all of which were using morning glories. I really wasn't expecting much, but I was curious as to how different I'd find it after a bit more psychedelic education and experience since my last use. The day of the trip was focused and relaxed, as they always should be. I had to wait a while for my one comfortable trip space to clear, so I watched Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas at my computer. Shortly before 12am, near halfway through the movie, my cohabitants dragged themselves to bed and my den became available. So I ate six pre-shaved Hawaiian baby woodrow seeds. I continued to watch the movie while I waited for the onset. My only previous meal for the day was a plate of ribs four hours earlier, though in hindsight, one really should fast for an impending LSA trip. Something like half an hour later, body load was taking hold in typical LSA fashion. Fortunately, I had a bag of supplies which included a cigar. I found tobacco to be a miracle cure for drug-related body loads and nausea. So I stepped outside and took several hits, and my suffering quickly subsided. There was an excitement in the air, something I noted in my first LSA trip. It's a pleasant electric high. I soon extinguished my flame and went back to watch the movie in peace. Things progressed from here. I was reminded of one time I took a small dose of Jurema and tried to watch this very same movie. The on-screen events began to get more confusing and chaotic. I was losing interest by the time body load came back in force, probably an hour after dosing. Once again, I remedied with lovely nicotine and cold, soothing winds on my bare skin. I then tried to finish the movie, but I quickly realized that I'd much rather find a more comfortable setting. I sat in my dark den and listened to Spongle's Tales of the Inexpressible on the CD player. Nausea wouldn't stay at bay for as long as this time. I was only able to find solace in the most still of positions on the couch, lying on my back, head propped up, unmoving. Smoking a couple bowls of Merlin's Blend Herbal Smoke propelled me into a dreamy and hazy relaxation. I started drifting away to the soundtrack of beautiful psychedelic pulses and phases. There was a strong body high. As time in the album progressed, my conscious mind was split in two. Initially, the visual reality presided over my head, but a boundless dream world began stirring and begged to take over. 
I first noted this when I heard the sample of McKenna speaking of walls crawling with geometric hallucination. It was as if one eye projected such hallucinations while the other held fast to waking reality. My more presumptuous eye efforts were futile in the end because the dream world gained control. My trip was gaining momentum and I kept slipping into dreams. Motion trails were now quite pronounced. I feared that I might fall asleep, unfortunately, so I had to keep myself awake so as to not be discovered in a drugged state when morning came. This was an unpleasant realization because even the slightest movement sent waves of paralyzing body load and nausea throughout my body. Nevertheless, I decided to leave glorious spongle and comfortable couch together in order to keep myself conscious in the glow of my soul-sucking PC machine. Here I listened to the Beatles' Magical Mystery Tour and started drawing in a paintbrush. I was out of my head at this time, not realizing what I was doing. I was sucked into a divine mission of manifesting these throbbing, profound visual projections into digital reality. The trip was quickly turning into something not quite as pleasant as before, starting as soon as I began on this drawing, yet I was forced to continue. My body and mind suck into worse and worse states during this time, which lasted a couple of hours. I felt very sick. My thought processes were increasingly negative. The worst of all this was a very disturbing occurrence in my stomach. A sudden contraction came about there, feeling as if this particular organ suddenly folded in half. This nearly choked me as I coughed and gasped for air. I wasn't comfortable here, by all means, but fear and a rising case of tunnel vision kept me staring and working intently. The body high was turning into muscle cramps and stiffness. My acid reflux was overly active. It was physically quite painful, and I was finding that the emotional suffering was only just the beginning. At 4 a.m., four hours after dosing, and two hours into my awful art session, I think I really started to peak. This is my usual bedtime, always allowing me plenty of time to safely venture up to my room before others wake up for work and the sunrise peaks into exhaust all sins of the night. I shut off the computer and began to collect my things. I was lost in a void of psychedelic disassociation. At this point, I walked through each room several times, forgetting that I had already been through and feeling very confused. I eventually got all of the incriminating materials that I'd spread out during the night into my backpack, and it was time to retreat to my bedroom. But I wouldn't be so fortunate. The muscle cramps were near paralyzing, and it was the freshly manifested auditory hallucinations that kept me frightened and unmoving. I couldn't come anywhere near the staircase due to this paranoia. Instead, I opted to sit on my couch and calm myself in order to try again. I put all of my effort into relaxing myself and smoothing out my breathing, but no amount of focus would bring success. This went on until the clock struck 5 a.m., I knew that I was in certain trouble now. My parents would be descending to my area very soon. I realized my only chance was to hide under a blanket and pretend to be asleep. I was very scared and kept visualizing all the screaming and general conflict that would come once I was discovered in this state of profuse sweating and large pupils. I lie still waiting. What would become of me? I was lost in the discord of an infinite flux of infantile hard-ons and twitching buds of lust, pain, matricide. I closed my eyes and saw shifting kaleidoscopic views of strange creatures fracturing and screeching in primal, painful language. Demonic owls belted out flanging hoo-hoos as I aligned myself with tragedy. I looked towards the television to find my sanity. It looked as it always did, but the sounds coming from it were not in a language I knew. Auditory hallucinations were very strong. 
All I could hear was incoherent grunts and babbling laid over perfect recordings of music I had heard that day. I was in despair. I very much wanted to calm myself, but my breathing was hopelessly erratic and the burning of my insides was all too much for me. If I made it through this, I decided I would have to change my life. I would have to stop putting myself through such suffering. Intently, I searched the plains for better ways and new highways of my ways. I made all sorts of false promises to myself, as if to bargain for the reception of my sanity. I was caught in loops of thinking, all focused on finding sanity, sobriety, peace, and comfort. I thought there had to be a way. It didn't seem right that six Hawaiian baby woodrose seeds, which is listed as a medium dosage on Eroid, would have this strong of an effect, especially when I considered myself an LSA hardhead. I did manage to pull through this. It was difficult, but through mindless chanting, I was able to convince myself that it was going to be alright. This is for the best, I repeated to myself. This is necessary. And I started to believe it. I realized I could learn from whatever came and that this would probably turn out to be an incognito blessing for my wretched self. I began to feel a lot less pessimistic at this point. I might even say I had become anxious to receive my punishment. All I had to do was wait. So I did. I won't go into details of the following events, but I became paranoid again and lost the optimism. I had very strong auditory hallucinations, moderate to strong closed-eye visuals and open-eye visuals, and one hell of a disgusting feeling in my body. At 10am, having somehow safely made it through the barrage of physical, emotional, and social obstacles, my trip was quiet and it was time to try to sleep it off. I vomited for a few minutes and headed off to bed. I managed to sleep for a few hours. When I woke, I felt much like how I did after the first bad trip I had with LSA. My head ached and I felt feverish. I couldn't eat for fear or immediate regurgitation. This all lasted a few days. It's been five days since this experience and I am still having trouble sleeping. I'm not keeping the ridiculous promises I made to myself, but I do feel glad to be alive, if not a little confused and a lot less sure of necessary upcoming plans. I've had two exceptionally bad trips in my psychedelic career, both with LSA. The depths of despair it can put me in are frightening. I'm still relatively new to psychedelics and still experimenting to find what I like. These awful LSA experiments certainly don't seem worth repeating. I feel strange now. Still, despite all the ills of this experience, I've learned in my maturing into adulthood to be grateful for every moment and learn from each accordingly. It is not entirely regret that I feel now, just a little confusion. Maybe I just need to find my way. There we have it guys, that was the first report there. Very, very mental, I would say, like man, mental craziness. He did describe the visuals there for a bit, some, you know, like he said he had intense open eye visuals. He didn't really explain those, but there was, I don't know what he's seen, lizards and creatures and shit went for the closed eye visuals. So that's insane. Um, that's cool stuff to me because I've never really had intense closed eye visuals when I've been tripping. I've just never had that. Um, which is which is weird to me. I, I've only had real intense ones from DMT, but you know that was um, DMT. You know that's a whole another scale, right? But definitely an interesting report here. We'll move on to the next one now. Next report is posted by a user named Girl. Um, the title is Room Spinning, Stomach Churning, Head Racing, Toilet Hugging, Bad Drunk Feeling. It's a long title. The dose is six seeds once again. Uh, Hawaiian baby wood rose and also some cannabis flowers, which uh, who knows what that means um, 145 pounds Let's get into it guys My boyfriend and I decided to buy some of these at a retailer in England We had gone in with the intention of buying shrooms, but we saw these and the clerk recommended them that evening 
which took six seed pods which we had scraped and soaked to the best of our ability. We still ended up having to do a lot of chewing. After about an hour, we felt the first mellow, enjoyable effects of the trip. We felt very chill and cracked up over certain objects in the room that suddenly looked hilarious to us. Not long after, I began to feel a bit overheated and not so good, and my boyfriend was feeling the same. We stood outside a while to get some air, but to no avail, my boyfriend ended up retching in front of the building, and I ran into the bathroom to do the same. We were both able to calm our bodies down a little, and sat on the couch. Things started to feel good again. We were feeling very frisky and decided to move the party upstairs. After being intimate for a while, my boyfriend started to get paranoid. He was definitely moving to the next stage of his trip. He was acting worried and confused, couldn't talk much. I asked him if he wanted to go back downstairs to the couch and he said, I need to work out where we are first. Trying to be the best trip buddy I could be, I did my best to calm him and reassure him of where we were. At this point, I started getting tiny flashes of complete sobriety and figured we were on our way back to normalcy. This was nowhere near the case. My trip began in full after a short while. It was not bad like my boyfriend's. However, it was not good either. Neither he or I had the desire to talk at all. We each completely withdrew into ourselves, and verbalizing anything would have been very difficult. I felt very calm throughout the trip, and found it difficult or too overwhelming to keep my eyes open, so I closed them for most of the time. Even with closed eyes, I got rainbow-tinged racing through space visuals, including a revisit to the neighborhood we had walked through earlier in the day. Despite my calm, however, the trip felt physically uncomfortable to me, and I found myself hoping it would be over soon. I felt nausea coming back. I could literally feel my stomach turn as it absorbed some of the substance, then feel a rush of the poison through my veins to my temples. The head rush was very, very unpleasant. The entire front of my skull felt intensely tingly. Might sound cool, but it wasn't. Then the nausea became overwhelming, enough that I went to the bathroom, made myself throw up, and repeated for the next six hours. Eventually I got wise and smoked some pot, which calmed my stomach like a miracle. I was able to go back to bed, though it was morning already. My boyfriend's trip was over by that point. He'd spent the whole time terrified that something was wrong with me, but was unable to get himself together enough to come check on me. In the end, I can't blame Hawaiian baby Woodrose for my boyfriend's bad trip. Bad trips happen with any psychedelic from time to time. However, I would caution against using it because of the terrible physical symptoms it produced for me. The only thing I could remotely compare it to might be the room-spinning, stomach-churning, head-racing, toilet-hugging, bad-drunk feeling. Looking back, I should have one eaten only a little bland food before the trip, not a full meal or anything hard on the stomach, and two, started out by ingesting less than the suggested dosage of pods and scraped and ground them better, and three, smoked pot throughout the trip. Ironically, it was my nausea that made smoking unappealing for me during my trip, but as soon as I actually took a hit, my nausea calmed down drastically. In conclusion, this substance made me feel poisoned much more than so many other drugs I've ever taken, and this kept me from truly enjoying any of the visual aspects of the drug. There we go, guys. That one was much, much shorter. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, it seems you do get visuals from this dose of six seeds, but like, it seems both users so far have had a too messed up of a headspace to really even enjoy the visuals or the rest of the experience from the uh, bad physical effects, you would say. Anyway, we'll jump into the last report here. This one's a bit higher of a dose. It's eight seeds. It is titled, My First and Last Time. It's posted by a user named Elephant, and the body weight is 150 pounds. Let's get into it. 
My girlfriend and I finally decided to try the seeds, after I had read much about them on the internet. I have eaten mushrooms numerous times, and I have also tripped on acid. Both my mushroom and acid experiences have ranged from pretty bad to excellent. I fully understand that it is the nature of psychedelic drugs like these to have unpredictable effects. Sometimes they are awesome, and sometimes you think you're going to die. I soaked 16 seeds in water for a day or so, and then spent a good amount of time scraping the skin off of them with my fingernails. I then soaked them again for another day, and scraped them once again. I had heard that the skin is the primary reason that people get sick when they consume these seeds, so I figured I'd be as safe as possible. The seeds were sold as 100% organic, so presumably there were never any pesticides applied to the plants during their growth period. In any event, once the seeds were fully scraped, I ground eight of them in a coffee grinder and dumped the powder into a container of water and let it sit for a few hours, shaking it up now and then. I did the same thing with the remaining eight seeds, but used a different container so that my girlfriend and I could be sure to have the exact same dose. She's about 130 pounds, and I weigh about 150. We both drank our slurries at the same time. But it only took about a half hour before she threw up. My stomach was feeling pretty crappy, and although I wanted to throw up, I didn't. Fortunately for her, Fomodin got most of the seeds out of her body before she had a chance to digest them. We took a walk, and things started to get interesting. My stomach felt pretty crappy, but I was still excited for the trip to come. It didn't take too long before I felt horrible. I tripped my balls off and had what I would describe as the worst 12 hours of my life. There were some very weird side effects of the seeds that I wouldn't wish on my worst enemy. I tripped hard, but not in a good way. It was totally a bad trip. One of the interesting things about hallucinogenics like LSD, shrooms, and LSA is that even though I know you just say the drug, sometimes I cannot help but feel that I am going to be fucked up forever. No matter how many times I told myself that it was going to get better, deep down, I was never really sure. My girlfriend helped to reassure me that eventually I would be okay, but it was a very difficult experience. Physically, I felt sick to my stomach, and visually, everything was wacky. The visual wackiness was typical of what you might expect from acid or shrooms, but not enjoyable at all. It just made things more difficult. At times, I felt halfway between sleeping and waking despite the fact that I wasn't even close to being asleep. I couldn't stay in one place for too long without growing extremely uncomfortable, so I had to go outside for a little while, then come back inside, then go back outside, etc. One of the strangest things for me was the definitive cyclic nature of the drug. I truly believe that this was a strictly physical thing and not mental at all. What would happen is I would feel really bad for a while, and then gradually I would start to feel more normal. But then I would start to feel bad again. And then I would start to feel more normal. The first time that I started to feel more normal, I got excited because I almost started to feel good for the first time. The weirdest thing of all was the physical effects that would go along with the cycles of feeling good and then bad. While I was feeling bad, my hands felt very uncomfortable and tingly. Then gradually I would start feeling better, and my hands would not tingle again. Soon though, my hands would start to get tingly and I could feel the badness coming back, as if I could literally feel the drug pulsing through my veins. Also very strange was the fact that I literally could not have a conversation during the bad parts, but during the times when I felt more normal, my entire mental state shifted such that I could have a normal conversation with various friends who were around at the house at the time. But like clockwork, I would begin to feel my hands get numb and tingly, and I would start to lose my verbal ability, until I had to leave to go outside and do my best to make it through the next hour of uncomfortableness. These cycles continued for the duration of the trip, 
which incidentally was a full 12 hours. At almost exactly 12 hours after we ate the seeds was the first time that I felt normal again, and it was an unbelievably emotional experience for me because I had such a harrowing experience for such a long time. The cycles of goodness and badness got progressively shorter and progressively milder. What I mean is that the bad parts were worse and longer lasting during the first hours after ingesting the seeds, but became gradually more tolerable and shorter lasting as the trip progressed. I would put the entire experience in a category as the quintessential bad trip. This was not only mentally and emotionally difficult for me, but physically it was extremely uncomfortable. During the bad periods, I felt sick to my stomach, tingly and numb in my extremities, and I felt on the verge of a yawn for the first time. To anyone who's thinking about eating these se seeds, I would say this, there is probably a reason that these seeds are not well known. I think people aren't too familiar with them because they are not popular. They are not popular because they are not enjoyable for the most part. I could see how in some instances some people might have enjoyed consuming these seeds, but my guess is that you're much more likely to have a bad time than a good time. This is coming from someone who's had plenty of mushroom and acid experiences. My worst mushroom and acid experience sucked in their own rights, where the suckiness was something that I could deal with as an experienced drug user. However, the suckiness of the LSA seeds put me over the edge beyond what I would think any mentally stable, normal person could effectively and comfortably deal with. There we have it guys, that was the last report there. I'd almost say like, you know, the Morning Glory seeds, you know, people were a lot more positive about them. I'm not sure if it's just, you know, that's my survey of the, the few reports I've read on each substance, but you know, if anyone has tried both these substances down uh, in the comments below, let me know because to me, it sounds like the Morning Glory seeds um, are much more enjoyable. Because um, I want to try LSA, but I don't know. I think I'm I'm leaning a lot more towards Morning Glory seeds at this point. They seem like they uh, have less bad effects, like less physically bad effects. But yeah, I do hope you guys enjoyed these few stories here today. If you did, be sure to leave a like and leave a comment down below. Let me know what substance you guys would like me to make a video on next um and yeah i'll be sure to make a video on it <laughs> but anyway it's been me blurry i'll see you guys very soon in another video peace out guys